is what happened round 11 of the FAM Motocross World Championship, the Fiat professional fullback MXGP of Lombardia. Jorge Prado grabbed the Fox hole shot for the ninth time in MX2 race one, and he quickly tried to establish himself at the head of the field, ahead of Brian Sue, but it wasn't long before Brian Bogus got into second and quickly advanced into the lead on lap three. Jeremy Siwa also made a good start, went from fourth to second with that pass on Prado, and then he quickly made light work of the 189 of Bogus to take the lead on lap five. Benoit Pacherel didn't make the best start, but he started to carve his way through the field, made a couple of passes. That one got him into fourth place when he found his way past Conrad Mews. And then Julian Lieber started to make inroads as well, got himself into second, but before long, Benoit Pacherel found his way into second with five laps to go on his Camille Yamaha. But it was a win in moto number one for Jeremy Siwa and Suzuki World MX2. Pacherel Lieber rounded out the top three. The next GP race one, Max Anstey hit the gate. Had a lot of work to do, but it was Tony Cairoli who grabbed the Fox hole shot for the eighth time in 2017. Just behind him, the number 243 back from injury, Tim Geiser with Paul Ann in third, and Hurlings going around the outside of the south to get himself into fourth. Bob Rochef went over the bars towards the end of the first lap, would pick himself back up in 25th place. Towards the end of the first lap, though, Hurlings went around the outside of Gautier Paul Land to get himself into second, and he went after Tony Cairoli. Roman Fevre had a bad start, got himself into seventh, and then quickly found his way past Commander Sal to go sixth, and then later on in the race, passed cold enough to eventually come home in fourth place. But the turning point of the moto, Jeffrey Hurlings tried to go around the outside of Cairoli. Cairoli denied the Dutchman the move, and uh, the 222 of Cairoli stayed out in front to win by a convincing margin over Hurlings, Paul and Fevre and Anstey. The next two race two. And this time it was Paul Jonas who grabbed the Fox hole shot for the eighth time. And he did hang about as the number six of Benoit Pacherel fell at turn one. Behind them, Thomas Covington and Jeremy Sewer battled for multiple laps. Sewer got himself in the second early on, but uh, Covington did not let up and continued to push the championship runner-up position rider for much of the race as Paul Jonas was out on a training ride on his Red Bull KTM. With Covington in second, Sewer sent an opportunity to pass the American. They banged bars, Covington went over the edge of the track, Siwa picked himself back up in third, but it was more energy lost for the Swiss rider. He eventually found his way through on lap nine, but by then Jonas was too far ahead and it was the Latvian who went on to win. Moto number two, Siwa was second, Covington third, Fassen and Aus Ausland rounded out the top five, and the overall belonged to Siwa for the third Grand Prix of his career. Jonas second, Covington your third place finisher. And in the championship, Paul's Jonas now 38 points clear of Jeremy Siwa. Thomas Kier Olsen lost ground to his rivals this weekend. But it was a fantastic Grand Prix here at Ottobiano. But Jeremy Siwa stood proudly on the top step of the podium here in Italy at round 11. But it's Paul's Jonas who continues to lead the championship. Next stop, Portugal in a week's time. I think I had the pace in the beginning, but uh, I had a tough battle with Thomas. He didn't let me pass so easy. I mean, it's good. It was good racing, but I lost so much energy there. Crashed twice, and he was gone, you know, and that costed my rhythm. And my, you know, it's super hot. The track is so tough, tough running in the first motor, and I just couldn't go anymore. And I was really, really scared to not make the finish. Final race of the day, MXGP race two. It looked like Aminas Jessakonis who was about to take a fox hole shot, but keeping it pinned around the outside was Tony Cairoli for the second time today and the ninth time in the season. Jesse Conis, though, quickly got his way into the lead with Cairoli in second, but by lap two, the Italian was through. Quickly following him through was Jeffrey Hurlings, and these two battled again and in exactly the same corner that denied Hurlings. It was Hurlings who kept his KTM ahead of Tony Cairoli, but not for much longer. 
despite the bar banging action between the two riders, it was the 222 of Kai Rowley that got himself quickly back into the lead. But then a mistake for the championship leader. He went off track and Hurlings went around the outside to take the lead on lap five. He stayed there for six laps, but as he started to fade in the heat, Kai Rowley railed around the outside and right in front of his fans on the far side of the circuit, Julie accepted the offer of invitation to go up the inside of the bullet. And from there, on lap 11, he did not look back. Hurlings was suffering again in race two with the heat. Max Anstey came through well to finish third ahead of Nagel and Jessaconis, but it was an emphatic victory for Tony Kai Rowley. Two wins out of two, his second double moto Grand Prix win of the year, the first coming back in Qatar at the opening round. Hurling second overall, Anstey third, and Kai Rowley now leads the championship by 67 points. Paulan moves up to second, DeSalle drops to third, but another memorable home Grand Prix for Antonio Cairoli. Another red plate to add to the collection as well. He'll definitely be looking forward to Portugal in a week's time. Yeah, we know that uh, Jeffrey is a good sign rider. I mean, uh, we, we all know this and uh, he was very fast, but uh, we, you know, the race is, is win at the, by the 35 plus two laps, 30 plus two laps. So. I'm really happy to, to be this fit at the moment. <laughs>